Hey guys, Wes here. In this video series, we're gonna be doing some mobile development using Ionic. So we're gonna be building a simple note-taking application that we'll deploy to Ionic View so that we could actually test our application out on say an iPhone, for instance, or any other mobile device. So let's take a look. So here's a look at the application we'll be building in this series. You can see that we have an app called My Notes. And on the front page of this application, we have a list of notes that we've created in the past. And you can see that we have the ability to create a new note either by clicking the button at the bottom of the screen here or at the upper right hand corner, we have this icon that we can click on to add a new note. So on this page, we have the ability to supply a date and a title and some note content. And we can actually go ahead and save that note. And we'll look at using Ionic Storage to actually persist the data that we save to our application. So once we've created some notes here, we can click on them and then we get taken to a sort of detail page, if you will, where we have a title and the date and the note content displayed. And it's here we can actually delete a note, which will take us back to the home page. We'll also look at how to do some basic styling. So for instance, having different background images for the different pages that we have, as well as using some of Ionic's out of the box components like these buttons and these list items and the icons, for instance. Towards the end of the series, we'll look at how to deploy this application to Ionic View so that we could actually test it on say an iPhone, even though I'll be developing on Windows throughout this series. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually install Ionic and Cordova and we'll use NPM for that. So if you don't have NPM, make sure that you have Node installed first of all, um, which should actually install the NPM package manager. So we'll go ahead and NPM install dash G Ionic. And I'm gonna use specifically at the time of this recording, the current version, which is 3.19.0. And we'll also install Cordova at 8.0.0. So the reason I'm going to install a specific version here is because, of course, in the future, these versions will update and they may make breaking changes. So if you'd like to follow along with the video, then installing these specific versions should make that a little bit easier. Okay, so once those are installed, we can go ahead and create a new project using Ionic Start. So we're going to say Ionic Start My Notes, and this will just be the name of your application. So feel free to name this whatever you'd like. Here we're gonna have the option to choose a starter template. And for this series, I'm just gonna use a blank template, which will just be a, a very simple starter project. And for now, we'll say no to whether or not we'd like to integrate our new app with Cordova. And we'll also say no to whether or not we wanna install Ionic Pro SDK. Okay, and with that, Ionic has created a new directory for us, so we can go ahead and CD into my notes. And if we just take a look at what's in this directory, we can see that we have a new project scaffolded out for us. So this is gonna look pretty similar to an Angular project that might be created with the Angular CLI, for instance. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code in this directory. And you can see that we have this source directory, which contains a number of different directories, as well as our index.html and a directory called pages where we have this home directory that has a home.html page, an assets directory, and an app directory. So before we dive into some code, let's go ahead and just start the application and see what it looks like. So for that, we can just use Ionic serve. And so you can see that this is gonna start our development server running on port 8100 in my case. And so it should open up a new browser window here. And this is our Ionic application. So throughout this series, I'm actually just going to be using Chrome to sort of debug our application. And we'll be using the inspector here. So if you control shift I to open that. And here I will have the device toolbar toggled. So just like this icon to toggle between sort of desktop mode and device mode. And with the device toolbar, note that you can also select a preset device. So this is kind of nice so we can see how our application would look if we were using any number of different type of built-in devices here. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and take a look at our homepage. 
So I'm in the pages directory and then under home, we're looking at home.html here. And we'll just make this look a little bit neater. Okay, so right off the bat, we can see we have this ion header tag that contains an ion nav bar and then ion title where we have this ionic blank title here. Let's go ahead and change this to my notes. And when we save, we can see that our server, our development server restarts and we should see my notes in the header bar here. Likewise, we can change what's inside this ion content tag. So we'll just remove that for now. So now we have a completely blank content area. So if you've developed other applications with Angular in the past, the directory structure here will look pretty familiar. So Ionic has this pages directory that will contain a directory for any number of different Angular components that we might build. So any Ionic application will consist of any number of different pages, and any one of those pages is an Angular component. So you'll notice that in the home directory, if we look at the TypeScript file here, we can see that we have our component directive where we have our selector and our template URL, and then the class home page with some default constructor that's been scaffolded out here. One thing that we don't have here is an array containing our styles, which you may see if you've used the Angular CLI, for instance, or worked on another Angular project. Instead, by default, Angular is currently using SCSS files, and we don't need to include this in our style sheets array. Here in SCSS, we can actually just nest our selectors. And so any styles which go into our page home component here will apply to this specific component. You could, of course, use the sort of standard Angular style sheet array in your component decorator. But for this series, I'll just stick with using SCSS as well. OK, so let's take a look at our app module TypeScript file in our app directory. So here you'll see our declarations where we'll put some of the new components that we create. Notice also that in this application, we have an entry components array in our app module file. And we're also going to put any of the pages that we'd like to visit in our application here as well. And we'll get into this in a little bit more detail a little bit later. So let's look now at our app.html file. So you can see that all this contains is an ion nav element. And here we have a reference to this root page property which if we take a look in our TypeScript file, simply stores a reference to our homepage component. And so our root page here, in this case, our homepage, will be at the bottom of a stack of pages that we might navigate through when we use our application. So Ionic is gonna use a stack to essentially manage routing in our app. So this is different than using like URL routes like you might use in a standard web application. In this case, Ionic is going to use something called the nav controller, which will basically manage that stack. So the page at the top of the stack will be the current page that we're viewing. And then to go to a previous page, we would simply pop the top page off of the stack, which would cause the page under the previous top page to be at the top. And likewise, if we'd like to visit somewhere else in our application, we can simply push a page onto the stack, causing a new page to be at the top. So Ionic essentially manages all of our navigation using this stack of pages. We always view the topmost page of a stack and we navigate by either pushing or popping new pages onto that stack. So let's go ahead and generate our first new page. So I'm gonna leave the server running and just open up a new console. And here we can just use Ionic generate page and let's call this page add note. Okay, so we'll head back into the code and notice that in our pages directory, we have this new directory add note. So with that created, let's go ahead and check out the HTML file and we're going to change add note here to simply add note. And we'll go ahead and remove some of this generated stuff from the uh, template generator. And then in ion content here, I'll simply say add note page. So what I'm gonna do now is create a button on our home page that we can click and then it will take us over to our add note page to sort of demonstrate that routing concept that we just talked about. So let's go into home and then in home.html, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a button here. So notice that when we use this ion button directive, we get some nice default styling for our button. So here I'm just gonna add a click listener and we'll just create a method called add note. So now if we go into our home TypeScript file, we'll go ahead and create that method. And now we're gonna use this nav controller that we have access to that's been injected into our constructor here to actually push 
the add note page onto the top of our navigation stack, if you will. So now we just need to make sure to add a reference to add note page. And then in our app module file, we need to also go ahead and add that to our list of declarations. And make sure it's imported here as well. And then we'll also need to include it in our entry components. So now if we click our button, you can see we get taken to our add note page.